holding the bottle of sake. How's it going, my fellow homo sapiens? It's your boy, Uzi Mike Hedo, and today I want to do an amorphous archetype analysis. Yes, that's right. Because like any good archetype, there's people in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community that loses their shit when a new archetype comes out and says it's broken or it is pure cancer. It happened when Shaw Dolls first came out, when the only allowed you to special summon twice per turn. Oh my god, you can't play Yu-Gi-Oh! The game is ruined. What is Konami thinking? And people lost their minds. Cleese came out, people lost their minds. BAs came out. And people lost their minds. And finally, Mass Inspectors touched down. And people said it was pure cancer. How do you defeat a deck so powerful? And we see it barely even tops. So let's jump into Amorphage. Because people say it is pure cancer. It is the brokenness. So let's jump into these monsters. And talk a little bit what the monsters do. How to play this deck. But not just that. What are the pros and cons? What are the weaknesses and strengths? of this deck here. So how this is going to work, I'm going to read the full effect of each monster one time. However, the effects that's the same on each and every monster, I will not read. I will just read what's different on each monster. So we have Gaskar. I believe that's how you pronounce the name. A Earth two-star dragon. Zero attack, 1850 defense. It pinnacle effect is doing Either during each of your standby phase, tribute one monster or destroy this card. A wonder is that mandatory. While you control and face up a morphish monster, neither player can activate monster effects except a morphic monsters. So that means no monsters in your hand, deck, or graveyard, or even removed from play can activate their effects. This is similar to the Majesty Fiend or a Skill Drain, where Majesty Fiend says no monster effects anywhere, and Skill Drain only negate monster effects on the field. This card here is like Majesty Fiend. It negates it everywhere. A very strong card if you're using it at the right time. Now, not just that, it has a penalty scale of 5. Now, its monster effects reads... If this card was Pinnacle Summon or flipped face up, Needle Player can special summon from their extra deck except Amorphid Monsters. So what you want to do is either Pinnacle Summon this monster or set this monster and have your opponent to attack into it and it will flip up, stopping anyone from special summoning from their extra deck. So up next is my favorite Amorphid monster, Amorphid Lux. A Earth 2 star dragon, 1350 attack, and a penalty scale of 5. It affects is if you control an amorphic monster, neither player can activate spell effects except amorphic spell cards. So I'm curious about that. Is it um, negating the spell card itself so neither player can activate spell cards, or is it negating? The spell effect, meaning you can activate a spell card, you just have no effect. Now, this effect is similar to Spell Counter and Horus the Black Flame Dragon level 8, negating your opponent's spells. I find this card very strong when it going when going against a deck like Pepe, a very, very strong card in the meta today. Even though this card is very strong, you have to be careful how you play this card, because if you get this card setting face up in your penal zone and you have an amorphic monster, you got to understand that you can't play things like Upstar Goblin. Or if you're mixing amorphic monsters with another type of archetype and you need to set a different archetype penal skill, you might not be able to set it because it's not an amorphic card. So you have to be careful. You don't want to lock yourself out. Now, its effect is normal. His monster effect is normal like all the other Morphic monsters. If it's Pinnacle Summon or Flip Face Up, neither player can special summon from the extra deck except a Morphic monsters. So the next Amorphic monster we have is Amorphic Hyper, a Earth 4 star dragon with a penalty scale of 3. 1750 attack. This is one of the beaters of the Amorphic deck. And basically what this card does, while you control an Amorphic monster, neither player takes effect damage. Very strong against decks like Burn decks. That's right, if someone's playing a Burn deck or they're playing that new uh, Red Eyes Metal Dragon that burns you for 500 for every card you uh, play, guess what? You won't take any damage with this in your penalty 
scale and you're having an amorphic monster. So that is really, really incredible. This card to me personally is similar to something like Chicken Race because Chicken Race allows you not to take any burn damage. I guess if your life points is a little bit low, this is the only card I could really find to figure out which card stops you from taking burn damage. There's some monsters out there, but this Floodgate monster here stops you from taking damage. It doesn't seem strong in a meta, but if you're going against a burn deck, this will be very strong in your penal scale. So the next Amorphous monster up is Amorphous Cavern. It is a four star Earth Dragon, zero attack, 2050 defense, a great butt on this one. And it effect is, as long as you control an Amorphous monster, neither player can activate Cards or effects in a chain as long as this one's in your penal scale. So that can be extremely incredible, especially for things like chain burn. Um, your opponent won't be able to chain their effects. Incredible. And not just that, um, something like if you summon a monster, you activate an effect, and someone wants to, I guess, maybe effect Baylor, would that be like chain two if you're activating one thing? And they're like a chain two, I'm going to respond to that. It stops it. So that's incredible. Now, I might be wrong on that. However, I think this card is good, but not as great as some of the other amorphic monsters that I've seen. What I like to do with this card is set it face down, allow my opponent to attack into it, and flip this puppy face up and stop everyone from special summoning from their extra deck. Next up, we have Amorphic Olga, a Earth 4 star, 1650 attack, zero defense. And a penalty scale of three. It a penalty effect is while you control an amorphic monster, neither player can tribute monsters except amorphic monsters. That effect is strong. I mean, especially with the new monarch support coming out, this does slow monarchs down a little bit, unless if they had monarchs. Um, Stormforth, I believe that's what it's called, the quick play that allows you to tribute one of your opponent monsters, so they'll be able to tribute your amorphic monster. But besides that. It shuts it down, but not just that. It's kind of like a mass of restrict. It stop your opponent from tributing, period. Not just for tribute summons, but tribute. So for Mass Inspector, they're spell and trap cards. You need to tribute those monsters to get those spell and trap card effects. Well, guess what? You can't tribute your monsters. So this monster here is pretty good. And its monster effect is the same. It just your opponent cannot special summon from their extra deck as long as this card was special summon or flip based up. Okay, so we have my second favorite amorphic monster, a Morphage Plus, a Earth 4 star dragon, penal scale of 3, 0 attack, 1950 defense, so pretty good um, a butt on this one. And it penal effect reads, as long as you control an amorphic monster, neither player can activate Trap effects, except a Morphage Trap. Man, that is incredible. You're talking about a World Decree sitting up on the field or a Genzo sitting on the field negating <laughs> um, trap effects. That is awesome. I love having that one out and the spell one out to negate spell and trap effects. It is great. Since this one here is a penalty scale of 3 and the other one that negates spell cards is a penalty scale of 5 is a great lockdown. And in effect, it's the same as all other Amorphous monsters. Now we have Amorphage Nortez, a Earth 6 star, penalty scale of 3, 22 50 <laughs> attack and zero defense. So it seems like they usually have some attack or zero defense or zero attack and some defense. Now, the special thing about this card in the penal zone is as long as this card, as long as you control an amorphous monster, neither player can add cards from their deck to their hand except by drawing them. That includes you adding an amorphic card to your hand. This effect means you can't add anything. This right here is a mistake on the field that you just have to pay cost for. It's a great card and it slows down your opponent. But not just that, it's a beater if you can normal summon or penal summon this monster some type of way. Now we have Amorphage Iridium. This monster here is incredible. Not just he's a beater, but he is just vicious. So he's a earth. 8 star, penal scale of 5, 
with 27 50 attack and zero defense. His effect in a penal scale is while you control an amorphic monster, any card sent to the graveyard is banished instead except amorphous cards. This is like a Masmos Cosmos. Very, very strong. But not just that, if he's on the field, he is just a straight powerhouse. Now, his monster effect is the same as all the other amorphic monsters. Nothing different between, between that. On the other hand, this monster here is incredible in the penal zone. I mean, just think about it. A lot of players need their extra deck. They need the graveyard. If your monster is destroyed or your penal monster is destroyed, even though the penal goes to the extra deck, I believe is in Banish instead. A very, very powerful card. Incredible. Now we have a Morphetch Psycho. So I've been hearing a lot of people hype this card up. However, by me playtesting this card, I really don't feel that this card is that good. So let's go ahead and read its effect. So you can ritual summon this card by using the Amorphage's Prism. After this card is ritual summoned, skip your opponent next main phase one. Negate the effects of all face up fusion synchro and XYZ monsters on the field. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can add one Draco Lord monster from your deck to your hand, except Psycho. Now, I mean, I think it's good. Yes, you skip your opponent main phase one for that one turn. It's not like you skip it as long as this card is on the field. Because if that was continuous, yes. Okay, at that point moment, I would have been like, yo, this card is godlike. However, you only skip your opponent main phase, your opponent next main phase one. So, yes, that one turn is going to be strong. Um, negating your opponent's face up extra deck monsters is good. However, however, we already have amorphic monsters that does that. We have amorphic monsters that stop your opponent from special summoning from the extra deck. This doesn't stop your opponent from special summoning from the extra deck. It's basically just a skill drain. Now, if you're mixing the Draco Lords with this deck, yes, this is awesome because once it's sent to the graveyard, you're going to be able to plus to add a card to your hand. But overall, I think that it, it's okay, but I feel like it's kind of a hassle of trying to get this monster out, and I'll talk about that a little bit later in this review. Okay, so that's all for the monsters. Now it's time for the spell and trap cards. Now, I'm loving this new fill card, Amorphish's Persona. This fill card to me is incredible, to be honest. So, all Amorphic monsters on the field gain 300 attack and defense. Once again, something boosting their attack and defense. Up to twice per turn, each time an Amorphic monster you control is tribute, immediately, immediately draw one card. You can banish this card from your graveyard to tribute pinnable monsters from your hand or field who level is total to 8, then Ritual Summon 1, Amorphic Psycho. So the first great thing about the Steel card is it boosts all your Amorphic monsters. Hands down, that's great. But the second thing I really like about this card is it's similar to cards from Beyond. Each time you tribute one of your Amorphic monsters, not just tribute summon, but even paying costs for your penal scales, you can draw cards up to twice per turn. That's incredible. It speeds the deck up so much because you're getting rid of your monsters and you're able to add more monsters to your hand by, you know, drawing cards. So that's incredible. Now, the main reason I was talking about the Morphous Cycle, what I don't like about it is, to me personally, I feel like it's a hassle because you've got to have this field card in the graveyard and you have to banish this card, then tribute those monsters. I feel that Amorphic monsters are strong and pretty powerful by themselves without going through the hassle of getting this Psycho monster out that cannot even protect himself. So that's the main reason I am not so happy about the Ritual monster, but this Phil card is just incredible. Now we have Amorphic Affection. Now, to me personally, this is the Best Amorphic spell card, period. It affects reads, all Amorphic monsters on the field gain 100 attack and defense for each 
amorphic card on the field. If a monster in your hand or your side of the field is tribute or destroyed by battle or card effect, you can add one amorphous card from your deck to your hand. You can only use this effect of amorphous infection once per turn. Man, this card is strong. At first, I was kind of upset because I'm like, uh, all my amorphous monsters only gain 100 attack and defense. That sucks. But running a pair of amorphous deck, you're going to have tons of amorphous monsters and your pendulum scales are amorphous cards. All your amorphous monsters is going to be gaining attack, including the field card, boosting it up by 300 attack. That's just incredible. But not just that. When a morphic monster is destroyed or tribute, even for the pendulum cards on the side that pays the cost, you have to tribute the monsters, you're going to add one card to your hand that's a morphic card. That's just insane because you can go for another infection, you can go for another spell card, or you can go for that morphic monster that's going to negate something your opponent wants to do. Incredible. Putting something like two of these on the field or three of these on the field, even amorphic monsters that have zero attack becomes beaters if you have a lot of amorphic cards on the field. Now we have the only amorphic trap card, and it affects reads. All monsters on the field except amorphic monsters lose 100 attack and defense for each amorphic card on the field. If a card in your penal zone is destroyed except during dance step, you can... Place one amorphic pinnacle monster from your deck in your pinnacle zone. You can only use this effect of amorphous lexus once per turn. Man, oh man, <laughs> that is, is incredible. So first thing first, all your opponent monsters, except amorphic monsters, or all monsters, period, except amorphic monsters, lose a hundred attack and defense for all face-up amorphous cards. This is similar to Burden of Mighty. Very strong. Very, very strong. So you're boosting your monster attack with your spells. And with your traps, you're making your opponent monsters even weaker. Now, the second best effect about this trap card is when your pinnacle monsters are destroyed in the pinnacle scales, you can instantly replace them. And since it has pinnacle zones, meaning if they're both destroyed at the same time, you put two new ones in. Out there, so if someone twin twister you, guess what? You're putting two new penal monsters in your penal scales. Incredible. Okay, so that is all the monster spells and traps. Now let's focus on the deck itself and how it plays. So the mechanic about this deck is it's kind of play like anti-meta. You want to use your penal effects to shut down your opponent. But not just that, you want to be able to penal summon or have one of your monsters flip face up so you can prevent your opponent from special summoning from their extra deck except amorphic monsters. So first, let's start to focus on the cons. I feel that the deck is very slow. Now, once again, you have to understand that I'm talking about a pure amorphage variant. I'm not talking about Drago scale amorphids. Pepe Amorphids or Clown Blade Amorphids. We're talking about pure Amorphids. I feel that the deck is slow. You have to open up the right amount of monsters so you can actually penal summon and stop your opponent from special summoning from their extra deck. Not just that, you got to have the right monsters in your hand to shut down your opponent. People have to understand that you can only use two effects. So you might want to stop your opponent from using spells or trap cards. You can only use two floodgates at once. Now, all the amorphic monsters have the same effect. So if you penal summon a monster, yes, your opponent cannot special summon from their extra deck unless it's a morphic monster. But when it comes to the penal scales, the effects that really shut down your opponent, the floodgates that can really hurt, you can only choose two. So for example, if my opponent's playing something like Pepe, I'm going to go for something like negate spell cards and perhaps banish cards or stop my opponent from adding cards to their hand. If I'm going against Chain Burn, I'm going to want cards like um, we neither of us take burn damage or um, your opponent cannot play 
cards in a chain. So you really have to choose which two effects that you want. Overall, there's three effects. There to stop the opponent from special summoning from the extra deck and two effects that's going to be considered like a floodgate. The second biggest issue I have with this deck is that there's really nothing to protect your monsters. Your monsters are just out there. I haven't seen any spell and trap cards that says, hey, your monsters cannot be destroyed by card effects or anything of that nature. So if your opponent splashes or the MST or they twin twister you, it's going to hurt. Um, there's really nothing out there to stop your opponent from destroying your monsters. You're going to want to have something to protect your monsters, but it's very difficult too. I mean, people can dark hole you, they can regecky you, and it's nothing you can do but take it. I mean, I have been playing match inspectors for a while, so yes, I feel pretty protected at times. So you're really going to want to think what cards you really want to put and your penal scales. If you know your opponent's playing Dark Hole and Regeki, you might want to negate effects of spell cards. If your opponent is going to be blowing things up with monster effects, you might want to negate monster effects. Now, you got to understand that there are certain scales. So, for example, to negate monster effects, that monster is a scale 5. And to negate spell effects, that monster is also a scale 5. So, I mean, you can have two scales on the field, to negate both of those things, but you won't be able to pin on summon because you got two fives. Another issue that I found with the deck is that you have to have an amorphic monster on the field to keep these floodgate effects. You have to. So if you only have two amorphic monsters on the field and you have to tribute um, two of those monsters on your standby phase, you got to understand that there's no monsters on the field for that short period of time. Your opponent is going to be able to go off at that period of time. Or if your opponent is able to book your monster or do something to your monster where it's no longer on the field or it's not faced up on the field, well, guess what? Your floodgates is no longer good because they're not going to get their effect unless those monsters are faced up on the field. The other issue I found, if you're running just the peer variant of Omorphage, you have two penal scales, two Omorphids in your penal scales, you're going to have to pay cost. And tributing two monsters each turn, it really hurts. Because, yes, you can penal summon them back, but at that time, your opponent can use spell and trap cards and they can use their effects. And there's a lot of cards out there right now that stops you from summoning, special summoning, and they, just, they can just blow up your scales. So that's a big issue that I'm finding with Amorphous Monsters. Not just that, I feel like they open up pretty slow sometimes. Yes, yeah, sometimes it's rare. I might get a really, really good hand that I just lock my opponent out right there. No ifs and buts about it. I mean, I just have everything I need, and I'm able to lock my opponent out. But most of the times, you're going to be stalling, and you're trying to slow your opponent down slow enough so you can pick up a little speed and actually gain control of the match. So that's this one of the, 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 the cons that I find with the deck is it's very slow. Now let's start talking about some of the pros of the deck. Now, I feel that this deck has some incredible pros, and one of those pros are really controlling how your opponent plays their game. People definitely need to special summon from their extra deck. So, when you have a monster that's been flipped face up, or you have penal summon a monster, they're hurting, especially if they are running heavy monsters and they don't have a lot of spell and trap cards in their back row. You're going to stop them, you're going to cut them off of their extra deck. That's incredible. Not just that, the fill card allows you to draw cards, but not just that. I mean, yes, it's nice to draw cards, but the the spell cards boosts, boost up all your monsters' attacks. So your monsters might come off weak, but late game, though your monsters become serious beaters, they are very, very, very strong. Another great pro about this deck is once you have the lockdown, you're usually going to win the game. Your opponent usually can't do anything because once you have your floodgates on the field, once you become very comfortable, you get your floodgates on the field, you have your amorphous spell cards in the back row that's boosting up your attack, um, weakening your opponent monsters, 
it's really nothing your opponent can do but sit there and take it directly to their face. It's basically GG. And they have some very, very good spell cards. I mean, when one of your monsters are destroyed or tribute, you get to add another Amorphous card to your hand. So that really adds something to your hand. Now, there's one more con that I forgot about. And it is once you're top decking with this deck, it's pretty much over. It is pretty much game over. It's very, very bad. Because if you're top decking, you're not going to be able to get your floodgate effects. And most likely, you're going to go back to stalling. So that's not really, that's not good when you're top decking. That's that's another con that I should have put there. But I feel like the pros outweighs the cons for the main reason. If you get in the lockdown, if you have the lockdown, usually your opponent is going to have a very difficult time defeating you. Overall, I think the deck is great. I think it's very competitive. However, I feel that it's up to Konami to do a lot of things on the ban list to really make this deck top tier. To me personally, I feel like it starts off as a top, maybe a tier 2, perhaps a tier 3 type of deck. But late game, maybe mid game, once you have your setup, at that point in moment, I feel like the deck becomes tier 1. Because if I'm negating monster effects and spell effects and you can't special summon from your extra deck, yes, at that point in moment, you're pretty much struck. You're, you, you're pretty much locked out of the game. However, the first half of the game, you're basically trying to get your resources. You're basically trying to slow your opponent down enough so you can get them into one of these slots. You can get your floodgates up. And you can stop your opponent and you can win this game. So in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community, I hear quite a few people talking about how to speed the deck up. And one of those ways to speed the deck up is to mix Amorphous with other archetypes. The issue that I have with this is you have to be very intelligent how you play the deck. And the main reason is if you mix it with another archetype, you have to be careful because you could lock yourself out. If you have an amorphic monster on the field, an amorphic monster in your penal zone, and you want to play something else, you have to make sure what effects, what floodgate effects are you negating. So for example, if I'm negating something like uh, trap effects, and I have a morphic monster on the field, an amorphic monster in my penal zone, and I have something like Phoenix Chain down, I'm not going to be able to activate it because I'm negating all trap effects you see so you have to be very careful or let's say i'm negating monster effects and i have a morphic monster on the field and i special summon a monster that has a very very nasty effect and it's not a morphic monster well guess what i just negated my own monster effect and i can't use it so you have to be very careful on how you're going to mix the decks overall i think the deck is going to be incredible I'm excited for this deck. I can't wait for this deck to come out. I'm going to be playing this on Dead Pro, Yugi Pro. I'm actually going to proxy this deck and play it down at my locals, get some practice in it, find more weaknesses, and find more strengths with this deck. If I left something out, please let me know in the comment box below. Please rate, subscribe, and comment. It really helps the channel. And thanks for watching. Matane.